Every part of this bandsaw is heavy and solid. Sandra helped me put in the tilting table. And then we took it off again, turned it round and put it in the right way round. Thank you. There we go. Lovely. You have to find a new home, mate. Sorry. For some reason, it has lots of wool stuck on it. And of course, it's pitted and rusty and worn. But then it is very, very old. At some point in its history, it's been badly damaged and then repaired. It's easy to imagine a large lump of wood being dropped on it and snapping off half the table. The repair looks fairly rough, but completely solid. I gave it some oil and it looks much happier already. And I filled in all the grease pots. I was told off for using grease on Bavit bearings, but these aren't, these are bronze ones. I couldn't find any clay in the bearings. I wonder whether this saw has had such a lot of work after all, despite its age. The tilting mechanism is solid and simple. It's there to make sure the blade stays on the wheels. Again, I couldn't feel any wear in the hinge. And both wheels seem to be round and spinning true. So not only is this a lovely old thing, it should be able to do its job well too. People wonder why I like these vintage machines so much. Well, yes, I do like them, and I wish I had a few more, but not just because they are magnificent pieces of history, but they also seem to be excellent value. I paid 500 euro for this, which is not cheap, obviously, but it's a fraction of what you'd pay for a new one of the same size, and there's no reason why this shouldn't keep going for another 100 years. Well, apart from the imminent end of the world as we know it, obviously, This blade came with the saw, unused I think, but rusty. Now this is a telling scar caused by the blades cutting into the table. If this much damage has been done to thick cast iron, just imagine what the poor blades look like. All in all, I was intrigued and puzzled by the way it had been set up. I set it up so the blade just missed all the guides, but that meant that the plywood insert that came with it was miles out. The blade slot is at least 6mm from where it should be. Strange indeed. I made up some more blanks. And while I was setting things up, I used a spacer washer to move the table out a few millimetres, just so the teeth were set further back from the edge of the 
at the hole. I don't want to add to the scars on the table. Then I improved on the piece of pipe I used last week to push the moving V-belt on the drive wheel. Using some steel pipe and some plastic pipe, I welded up this shape. The plastic pipe may or may not rotate when the belt runs against it, but it might save some wear anyway. I made it that shape so I could make use of two existing holes in the frame and not drill any more into it. Little pegs sit in those holes and so my lever arrangement shouldn't twist and the weight on the bottom should keep it upright. And that was that. Time to start the engine again. And put it into gear. Except the belt slipped off the engine pulley. Having the saw blade in position does affect the way the belt behaves. I'm not sure why exactly, but once I'd sorted that out, everything seemed to be working. Wheels going round, blade going round, everything staying where I want it to. Now I need to cut some heavy pieces of timber into shape, but they aren't here yet. In the meantime, it munched happily through some reasonably hefty pieces, with no sign of the engine struggling. So I'm very happy with all that, and it's another step forwards in my timber processing plan.